and that's intensity modulated photocurrent spectroscopy. All right, so let's start. What is intensity modulated photocurrent spectroscopy? The measure, measurement result is the photocurrent admittance. So it's the ratio between the current or the current density, J, and the light intensity, and gives you then an admittance, a PC for photocurrent. And it's in the same uh, configuration as for an impedance. So we, look in, we are looking at sinusoidal signals and uh, comparing them. And you could think of a diagram like this, where potential or voltage would be here on this axis and the photocurrent or current, uh, current density on this axis, and then the impedance uh, would be in this, uh, in this plane on the left. If we add one dimension by the light intensity, uh, we see that we have a more, more, more complex diagram of, of values. And what we do now is we fix the potential with the MFIA, and then we modulate the light intensity uh, with different frequencies, and then we measure the current response here. So, and uh, with this technique, we can look at different timescales, like how photo generated current is setting in after switching on a light. And um, that is a bit complementary to uh, something like DLTS, where in DLTS we stress the sample, while in impedance and in IMPS, we're trying to get the most information out of our sample just by a small signal perturbation. And this IMPS, Intensity Modulated Photocurrent Spectroscopy, is a common technique for solar water splitting and for solar cells. And the question why this is mentioned here is basically because it's a nice measurement technique and it's the same setup that I'm using or I'm, I've used to show you uh, the, the DLOS measurement here with the MFIA. And that's why we're switching now back to lab one and I'm just um, loading a new settings file in here. And we wait until it's updated. And you see, this is very similar to what we've had before. Um, what we are using now is a bit of a different setup. So you saw we're not comparing current and voltage. We're not uh, calculating the ratio. We're calculating the ratio of the current and the light. And the light is now given by our aux in, which is our sensor input. But we can easily change that in lab one here in our, our input monitor um, to uh, aux one. If I had that to voltage, that would be just the impedance. And then we can choose here frequencies uh, as we wish. And we have to do some uh, modifications here in the lock in tab. So basically what we need is we need to, uh, to um, disable that the, that the drive amplitude goes to the voltage output. But what we do is we use the, our demodulators and our outputs. So we, we are using the oscillator one and we're feeding it into the demodulator. And then we are creating here a signal that is now that has an offset of 1.5. This is a constant light offset and has a, um, an amplitude of 200 millivolt. So this is the output that's now set to our output three where uh, our um, light controller is situated. So this is our new signal that's going to the light controller. And now uh, we, can, we can look in the scope of how that all looks like. Um, is that the right frequency? Yes. So here you can see um, um, th those are both active. Yes, they are just uh, perfectly overlaid. Um, so you see the aux in, which is the sensor signal. So the light intensity that is reaching our sample really has a sinusoidal uh, shape and also the current input uh, that we're measuring of our solar cell also has a sinusoidal shape. So this is a measurement uh, where the excitation and the system response are perfectly in phase. Uh, and 
but this is also at the low frequency of a relatively low frequency of 200 hertz. So this is a nice, uh, this is nicely showing you that uh, we can generate, we can generate pulses with uh, the MFIA and lab one, and we use them for the DLOS, but using this log in tab, we can also feed a sinusoidal signal with an offset and an amplitude to our AUX output, and then not only use it uh, directly for the sample, but also to trigger an external excitation. But of course, we're always interested in spectra. And for this, we can also use the sweeper for, for, for sure. And there, I want to show you just an example measurement from 20 hertz to 10 kilohertz. And uh, this should start very easily. So we're seeing after a bit of noise at the lower frequencies that there is a branch uh, building up here in, in our sweeper. And if we're a little bit more patient, oh, there was a change in the, uh, in the measurement range. All right, we have like 25 seconds to go is the prediction of our sweeper. And the results look as I tested them previously in, in the dry run. Um, okay, 20 seconds, 17 seconds left. And what we see here, if the solar cell is still active the way it was before, that we see here a semicircle forming. And again, I want to tell you that please don't, don't ask to, to uh, characterize this and to, to give you a 100% valid interpretation of this. Um, this is an old cell. This is basically almost not working anymore, but it's, uh, it's showing you the setup, how the setup works, how you can measure frequency dependent, how you can use the setup for the MFIA, not only in an electric, by electrical means, but also to, to trigger light sources and light sensors, and uh, then to finally measure intensity modulated photocurrent spectroscopy.